What if I told you that just last week, you could have pre-ordered a brand new electric pickup truck for under $20,000? And what if I told you that dream just got nuked from orbit by a single piece of legislation? This is the story of how the Slade EV went from a revolutionary game changer to, well, let's just say the math got a little more complicated, the Bezos factor. To understand how we got here, we need to talk about the elephant in the room, or should I say the multi-billionaire in the room, Jeff Bezos, the guy who turned books into rockets, has been quietly bankrolling an EV startup called Slate Auto for three years. And I mean quietly. This company operated in stealth mode longer than most people keep their New Year's resolutions. The numbers are staggering. Slate Auto raised $700 million total through Series A and B funding, with the Bezos family office, Bezos Expedition, leading the charge, alongside General Catalyst and TWG Global. But here's where it gets interesting. Slate was initially created as a project called ReCar in early 2022 with ReBuild Manufacturing, a domestic manufacturing incubator co-founded by former Amazon consumer CEO Jeff Wilkie. This isn't just Bezos storing money at another startup. Slate is using Amazon's work backwards principles, the same methodology that created Prime and AWS. When the second richest person in the world starts applying his greatest hits to pickup trucks, you pay attention. The plan was ambitious. Build the truck at a former printing plant in Warsaw, Indiana, bringing over 2,000 jobs back to a community that lost 500 when the facility shut down in 2023. Classic Bezos, find a shuttered American facility, throw money at it, and promise to reindustrialize the heartland. I mentioned this in a previous video, I think the Slate EV has a number of problems, and they just got a lot worse with some new legislation. However, let me go through some of the problems that I think the Slate needs to address. The truck that time forgot. So what exactly is this thing? The Slate truck is basically what would happen if you asked an engineer to design a pickup truck using only 1995 technology, and they took that as a challenge. At just 80.5 cubic feet, the SUV body is about 10% less roomy than a Nissan Versa. Let that sink in. Nissan's entry-level sedan has more interior space than this truck's SUV configuration. The base model, called the Blank Slate, because apparently even the name needs to be ironic, comes with manual windows, no radio, no speakers, and unpainted composite body panels. But wait, there's more, or rather less. The Maverick comes standard with a sound system, power windows, and a central touchscreen. All things were missing on the slate. You literally get more features in a base Ford Maverick, and we'll get to why that's a problem in a minute. The whole hook was supposed to be customization. Slate's online configurator enables so much customization that it makes building a Rolls Royce feel restrictive. Do you want an SUV? That's an accessory package. Want speakers? That's extra. Want paint that isn't slate gray? Yeah, you can get that, but it's a vinyl wrap. Under the hood, or rather under the floor, you get 201 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque from a lone rear-mounted motor, with a manufacturer estimated 0-60 to 60 time of 8 seconds. The base model gets 150 miles of range from a 52.7 kilowatt battery or 240 miles of range if you upgrade to the larger 84.3 kilowatt pack the $20,000 illusion. Here's where the story takes a turn that would make a soap opera writer jealous. Congress passed Trump's tax cut bill, which eliminates the federal EV tax credit by September, right before Slate was supposed to start deliveries. When Slate came out of stealth mode in April, the startup heavily promoted that its all-electric truck would start at under $20,000 with the $7,500 federal EV tax credit. The actual starting price is set at just under $27,500, and that sub $20,000 price was with the expiring $7,500 federal EV tax credit. So let's do some math that would make any startup founder reach for the antacids. The truck was never actually 20 grand. It was 27.5 minus a tax credit that required you to have enough tax liability to claim it. Now, the loss of the tax credit complicates that goal, potentially pushing the base model much closer to $27,500 before options. Industry analysts weren't exactly shocked. Ed Kim, president and chief analyst of Auto Pacific, said, Unfortunately for Slate, this development really does hurt the value proposition of the product a lot. That idea was really, really interesting at $20,000. It definitely becomes a tougher sell at $26,000, $27,000. The competition bloodbath. Now we get to the really painful part. What $27,500 actually buys you in 2025? Spoiler alert, it's not pretty for Slate. Let's start with the obvious comparison. The 2025 Ford Maverick has a starting sticker price of $29,840. That's only $2,340 more than the base slate. And here's the kicker. Kelly Blue Book Fair Purchase Pricing currently suggests paying $1,430 to $1,776 less than the MSRP, so you can potentially get a fully featured Maverick 
for less than a bare bones slate. What do you get for that similar money? Well, the Maverick offers room for four adults, a hybrid powertrain with 38 MPG combined, up to 4,000 pounds of towing capacity, and actual creature comforts. Meanwhile, the slate offers manual windows and a promise that you can bolt stuff onto it later. But wait, it gets worse. If you're shopping on pure budget and functionality, the used market is absolutely brutal to Slate's value proposition. You can find used Ford Rangers, Chevy Colorados, and even some Nissan Frontiers in the low 20s. Sure, they're used, but they're also proven reliable and don't require you to become a DIY mechanic to get basic features. And here's where things get really spicy. If you don't actually need a pickup truck bed, the small SUV market is eating Slate's lunch. The 2024 Chevy Trax starts at just $21,495, and the 2025 Nissan Kicks Play starts at $22,910. Both come with, you know, features like speakers and paint and doors that don't require manual labor to operate. The Honda HRV, the Hyundai Venue, the Hyundai Kona, they're all priced competitively with the Slate, but come with things like rear seats and a sound system. The rear wheel drive winter nightmare. But perhaps the most baffling decision Slate made was to go with rear wheel drive only. In 2025, for a truck, that's supposed to be affordable and practical. Look, I get it, rear wheel drive is cheaper to engineer and manufacture, but have these people driven in winter? The 3,600 pound truck ought to hit 60 miles per hour in a manufacturer estimated eight seconds on dry pavement. But what happens when there's a dusting of snow in your driveway? Meanwhile, most of the small SUVs we just talked about offer all wheel drive as an option. Even the 2025 Ford Maverick offers all wheel drive with its hybrid powertrain. So Slade is asking customers to pay similar money for less capability in conditions that happen for half the year in most of America. The configurator trap. Now, Slate will tell you that the configurator is their secret weapon, the ability to customize your truck exactly how you want it. And to be fair, the options are impressive. You can choose everything from a beefier front bumper to plastic black fender flares to custom vinyl wraps that would make NASCAR drivers jealous. The party trick is the SUV conversion. An SUV kit is available that converts the truck into a five passenger SUV, complete with roll cage, rear seats, and airbags. The transformation takes about an hour and turns your pickup into something that looks vaguely like a Lancia Delta Integrale had a baby with a Lunar Rover. But here's the thing about configurators. They're designed to separate you from your money fast. There's currently no mention of how much the myriad add-ons will add onto the EV sticker price. Want that SUV kit? That's probably another 10 grand. Want paint that isn't prison gray? Add the wrap. Want speakers? That's extra. Want to not hate your life every time you roll down a window manually? You're looking at an upgrade. By the time you've configured a slate you'd actually want to drive daily, you're probably looking at 40 grand or more. And at that price point, you could get an Audi Q3, a loaded Honda Pilot, or a Ford Bronco. You know, actual vehicles with proven track records and dealer networks. The startup reality check. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, startup risk. The EV space is littered with the corpses of companies that promised the world and delivered bankruptcy. Once explosive growth of the EV sector has cooled off, and multiple startups dedicated to building EVs have filed for bankruptcy. Those that have survived, like Rivian and Lucid, have done so by burning through billions of dollars. Even with Bezos' money, Slade is asking customers to put down deposits on a truck that won't exist until late 2026 from a company that's never built a production vehicle. And then there's the service question. Tesla took years to build out a service network, and they had the advantage of starting in affluent markets where early adopters were willing to drive hours for service. Slate is targeting budget-conscious buyers who probably aren't thrilled about shipping their truck back to Indiana every time something breaks. Customer deliveries are expected to commence near the end of 2026. That's a year and a half away. In startup time, that's roughly equivalent to the Mesozoic era. How many things could go wrong between now and then? Supply chain issues, manufacturing delays, more policy changes, or just the general chaos that comes with trying to build cars from scratch? The Bezos wildcard. But here's where the story gets interesting again. Slate Auto has amassed an impressive $700 million in funding. And that's not just any $700 million, that's Bezos' money. When Bezos, or Bezos, gets behind something, he plays the long game. Amazon didn't turn a profit for years because Bezos was building an empire, not a quarterly earnings report. Blue Origin has been burning cash for decades because Bezos believes in a mission. The question is, does he believe in the Slate mission enough to write whatever checks are necessary? Remember, Tesla came within weeks of bankruptcy multiple times before becoming the EV giant it is today. The difference? Tesla had Elon Musk willing to put everything on the line. Does Slate have that same level of commitment? The secret venture backing Jeff Bezos can't stop talking about suggests that 
maybe it's true. The market reality. Let's zoom out for a minute and talk about why this matters. The average new car price reached $59,205 in March, 25% higher than comparable gasoline vehicles. The automotive industry has genuinely priced out huge swaths of America. For a new $48,000 car, you need to make at least $96,000 a year to afford the $800 monthly payment, and in 2023, only 40% of U.S. households made more than hundred grand. So 60% of American households literally cannot afford the average new car. The used market isn't much better. Decent used trucks are still hitting the mid-20s, and anything reliable under 20 grand is either ancient or has more miles than a NASA probe. So Slate's original vision, a genuinely affordable new truck, wasn't crazy, was actually probably pretty necessary. The problem is that the end of the EV tax credit aligns with the Trump administration's push for deregulation, and it may hinder U.S. EV adoption, which reached 7.6% of new vehicle sales in 2024. Slate isn't just fighting market forces, they're fighting policy headwinds. The engineering deep dive. Let's talk about what Slate actually got right, because there's more here than meets the eye. Based on a quick look at the truck's engineering, it will be without question one of the least mechanically complex high-volume vehicles offered in the U.S. in probably a century. Slate's composite panels will be made using injection molds rather than sheet metal stamping, which means the company doesn't have to invest in giant stamping operations or even a paint shop which can run $400 million or more for an automaker. That's genuinely clever cost engineering. The single rear motor setup is simple and proven. With 201 horsepower and 190 pound-feet of torque, the 3,600-pound truck delivers adequate performance while keeping complexity low. Sometimes the best engineering solution is the simplest one. A Tesla-style North American charging standard port is included, and a combined charging standard adapter is available, capable of accepting up to 120 kilowatts. It can charge from 20 to 80 percent in around 30 minutes on the DC fast charger. That's competitive with anything in its class. The what-if scenarios. Here's where the story gets really interesting. Again. What if Slate had made a different choice? The script mentions a tantalizing possibility. If they could have done a turbo three-cylinder auto with front-wheel drive or a small four-banger and gotten the base model to $15,000 or even $10,000, wow, that is a game-changer. That's a no-brainer blockbuster winner right there. Look at what the other markets get. In Thailand, you can buy a brand new pickup truck for under $15,000. In India, Tato sells a Nano for a few thousand dollars. The technology exists to build truly affordable vehicles. We just don't do it in America because our regulations and market expectations demand complexity. The bigger question is, why didn't a major automaker do this first? Slade has hired hundreds of employees while in stealth, many of whom come from Ford, General Motors, Stellantis, and Harley-Davidson. The talent exists, the technology exists, the market demand clearly exists. So why did it take a Bezos-backed startup to even attempt this? The answer is probably corporate risk aversion. Major automakers are slaves to quarterly earnings and established product lines. They can't afford to cannibalize their profitable F-150s and Silverados by building something actually affordable. It took an outsider with Silicon Valley money to even try it. The verdict. So where does this leave Slate? Slate's pivot reflects broader challenges in the EV industry as federal incentives wane. They're not just fighting their own execution challenges, they're fighting a policy environment that just became significantly more hostile. The company claims strong interest. They're taking $50 refundable deposits and apparently have significant reservation numbers, though they haven't released specific figures. Slate Auto made waves in April when it revealed its truck and racked up 100,000 refundable reservations within a matter of weeks. But interest and actual sales are two very different things. Tesla had hundreds of thousands of Model 3 reservations and still went through production hell. Rivian had massive pre-orders and has struggled with delivery timelines. Reservations are easy. Building and delivering trucks profitably is hard. The fundamental question is, will people actually buy this thing at $27,000? The big question around Slate hasn't really changed since the company's launch. When push comes to shove, will people put their money where their mouth is and at what price? Monthly payments for the Slate truck are said to average $300 to $400 per month. That's not nothing, but it's also not unreasonable for a new vehicle. The question is whether buyers will accept the compromises for the price point. Wrap up. The Slate EV story isn't over, it's just getting more complicated. The company's ability to deliver a compelling affordable truck without federal support will test its viability in a competitive world. The wild card remains Bezos himself. When you're worth over $200 billion, the ability to simply decide to make something work regardless of short-term profitability is a superpower. The question is whether he's willing to use it. Slate purports to be rekindling American industry with a suite of U.S. industrial businesses, 
from batteries to composite manufacturing. If they can pull this off, they're not just building trucks, they're proving that American manufacturing can still innovate and compete on cost. So, will the Slate EV succeed? Well, nobody knows for sure, but the fact that it exists at all, that someone with serious money looked at the automotive landscape and said, hey, we can do this better and cheaper, that's worth paying attention to. Even if the $20,000 dream is dead, the $27,500 reality might still be revolutionary. The truck is supposed to start deliveries in late 2026. By then, we'll know if this was either the beginning of an automotive revolution or just another expensive lesson in startup reality. Either way, it's going to be one heck of a ride.